Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are here at the SDN World Congress in The Hague in the Netherlands and I'm talking with an old friend, Ari Banerjee, who is Senior Director Strategy at Netcracker. Ari, one of us is following the other around the world. I know we are, um, right? Sometimes I look behind me and you're there and sometimes you look behind and I'm there. I it's always good to meet you, Martin. Thank you. Um, let's get straight into it. You recently launched uh, a new SDN NFV solution called NEC Netcracker NAAS, yeah. NAS, capital N-A-A-S. Uh, could you tell us what it is? What we launched at um, in the conference here is um, NEC Netcracker NAS, but it's not your traditional network as a service. It's much more beyond that. It's a network as a service and applications. So it's really a cloud-based uh, marketplace with value-added services and applications uh, which you can use by which can be used by operators to serve their enterprise customers, um, as well as their residential customers as well. What we are doing for them is that it's just just a cloud marketplace built on top of uh, AVP or Agile Virtualization Platform, which we have discussed before. Uh, what it does, in a sense, is take takes out the risk for commercialization. Um, it's got inbuilt orchestration, uh, business enablement applications, or the BSS layer. Um, it's got the design element, how you can bring services faster, quickly to the market. So for operators, it's a one-stop shop, takes out the risk of commercialization, and brings it all together for them in a cloud-based marketplace. What kind of services does the NAS solution provide then, Ari, that's different to anything else? So it, 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 there are two things, right? It brings together the IT side of the house or the applications of the business productivity side of the house. So we have about 100 plus partners, which includes IT apps such as uh, you know, all the usual productivity, business productivity apps, uh, software as a service stuff, um, storage services and so on. But on the other side, and this is absolutely unique and probably the first time that anybody has done this, is bring together an app store model for VNF as a service. So things are like firewall or um, you know, uh, PCRF, um, you talk about policy DPI stuff, or if it's a WAN acceleration, it is, um, you know, uh, different types of gateways, all of that as virtual network functions in an app store type of a model. And this is all together. So once an SMB customer or enterprise customer goes in, and whether they have virtual CPE, whether they have coming in through over the top, whatever that might be, they can get all these IT applications plus their value-added VNF as a service applications in one easy-to-use cloud environment. So one self-service portal. Okay, well, we talked about the cloud and everything is now in the cloud. How will SDN and NFV help deliver these services better than they were delivered before as far as the service providers themselves are concerned? So if you think about a lot of these services, right, you can do that without SDN and NFV. Yeah. What it does is, it takes 12 to 15 months for these services to be rolled out. So SDN and NFV brings in agility, on-demand nature of these services, time to market. As if you think about it from, this is from a revenue generation standpoint, but also if you think about it from an OPEX and CAPEX standpoint, reduces truck rolls, um, you know, the troubleshooting is much easier because it's in a, in a cloud-based environment where you don't have to send technicians to each and every, uh, you know, enterprise at home. Yeah. And another is that unique differentiating element of the secret sauce for, because every enterprise, their needs are very, very unique. One size is not going to fit all. Mm. This gives it that whole differentiating flavor so that these can, this cloud environment can be customized, these applications can be customized and be used by, uh, by, by enterprises for the, uh, meet their unique needs. Thank you. You mentioned that your NAAS solution, NAS solution, overcomes the hurdles that carriers are facing when they're commercializing STN and NFE. Can you expand on that a little? Absolutely. Um, you know, what precisely are you talking about there? So there are a few critical s steps when you talk about commercializing SDN and NFE. And um, if you look at the floor and if you look at the conference, um, you know, most of the operators are talking about it, right? How do I commercialize these services at scale? Yeah. And when you talk about commercializing, it's not just about VNF services being onboarded, right? It's much more beyond that. How do you onboard the services? How do you manage the partner ecosystem? How do you settle 
uh, manage the contract management, um, how, all of those things with your partners. How do you use your BSS or your transaction management systems you know, much more in an agile way or in a way of my, using microservices yeah. to build charge rate for some of these value added services? Because at the end of the day, if you can't charge a rate for it, it might as well be a hobby, right? <laughs> Um, yeah. And then you go into customer experience, and customer experience across the two different layers. How do you onboard the service on a self-service and make it available to all sorts of you know, distribution channels? Be it a self-service, be it a mobile app, be it anywhere else where the whole omni-channel engagement, right? Mm -hmm. How do you make it simple? Yeah. And on the other side, it's about closed-loop service fulfillment and assurance, service lifecycle management. Um, so when you think about all of these things, you can't do any one of those, you can't make money. And what we are doing for the operators is taking the entire risk of these things, of these IT aspects of things, and we're taking the risk out for the operators. Mm -hmm. And coming from an operational background, being the market leader in building an OSS, we do that better than anybody else. Interesting what you just said, because down on the floor, people I've been speaking to here in the studio, have spoken about the fact that we've moved on from the concept of SDN and NFV, we've done proofs of concept, we've had field trials and all the rest of it. Now we're moving into the commercialization, operationalization field and so on. And several people have talked about the fact that the spotlight is now very much on assurance and closed loop assurance. What does that mean and why is it so important? I think uh, we are at a cusp, we are at a time where we are seeing some major projects go off the floor. Mm. It's full-scale virtualization, no turning back, full throttle here. And as you move into that phase, operators start to realize very, very quickly, right? How do you charge, how do you bill is one aspect. What about quality of experience? In the traditional world, right, we used to have separate silos of service fulfillment and service assurance. Two different camps, two different buying behavior, mm. different vendors. Mm. Uh, you can't afford that today because you are now talking about execution of services and then measuring the services. Because you have to understand at what point you scale in, what point you scale out, at what point you read out traffic, at what point you turn on another VNF just to manage it. And these things cannot be done in an offline mode, it has to be done much more in real time. So we talk about service lifecycle management or hybrid operations management, because it takes care of all of these things uh, about how do you f launch a service, well, how do you instantiate a service? How do you launch? Um, how do you measure? And at what point do you execute resources to make sure that this quality of service do not fall below a certain threshold? Remember, a lot of these services are launched for enterprise customers who have major SLAs, penalties attached to it. Mm. You want to make sure it works. Because we both know, right, at the end of the day, an enterprise or a consumer doesn't care whether it's a virtual resource or a physical resource, they want quality of experience. Sure. You have to deliver it, no matter what. Good answer, thanks for that. Last one, Ari, which is two parts, so it's really two, but we'll call it one. Um, how would you assess the maturity of SDN and FV in the industry today, given what we've just been talking about? We are getting there, are we, and quite quickly? Absolutely, we are getting there very, very quickly. I think major operators have taken major initiatives uh, in order to move that as fast as possible. So earlier we talked about, previous years we talked about POCs and trials. Mm -hmm. We are talking about commercialization. It's a huge leap yeah. in terms of where operators thinking is at. It's not about making the technology work. It's about people, process, organization, and commercialization. How do you bring it all together? Um, and obviously they are relying on partners such as us to make that happen for them. So we are at a, at a major inflection point where we are going straight up in terms of uh, where we see a lot of movement happening in the industry. So the 64, I'm going to say $64,000 question, but it's a bit more than that. Um, how ready is SDN and FV for widespread adoption and when are we going to see it? I think we are, we are in the beginning stages of that in terms of deployments. Uh, major projects are underway. We have seen different projects go live at different stages. In fact, we had our one of our major customers here speaking on our workshop here. Um, and they talked about how we launched services for them. They're going full SDN and FV for the enterprise customer. Mm -hmm. Phase one, which had three sprint cycles in it, with, and it went live, was done in 12 weeks. Bringing together DevOps, bringing together Agile, 
And the bigger thing is the days where we did this service creation in isolation and in silos yeah. and passed it on to the operators and they looked at it and said, hm, not the right service, yeah. change it, yeah. that's gone. It's, it's, a, it's a collaborative approach. Uh, continuous integration, continuous development, continuous testing, working hand in hand with operator, us as a strategic partner, could be any other integrator, could be third party VNF vendors, all of that on a common cycle. And we do that as part of the AVP process. Great stuff. Ari Banerjee, as usual, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Martin.